Welcome, this is Kurt Thompson of TrumpetSizzle.com and your brass instructor on YouTube. And we're going to be going over some audition tips for the 2013 drum corps season. These tips will apply to all brass in the horn line from the sopranos all the way down to the contras. So it's all applicable to every brass in the horn line. Now, what this is not, this is not a lesson. So you're getting tips, but I'm not going to go into each one in great detail. And of course, you're not here with me, so we're not really doing a lesson. So this is not going to be a lesson or even some kind of YouTube tutorial. These are things that should you try at least some of them or all of them, you'll highly increase um, your rankings in the audition and what you want to achieve. So let's, um, let's get at it. First thing, if you just recently got your piece, I recommend to take advantage of um, increasing your sight reading abilities. So don't work on it right when you get it. Of course, if you've already worked on it, this doesn't count. But when you get it, put the metronome on and sight read the whole thing all the way through. Maybe do that once or twice. You get to take advantage of sight reading new material. Why not do it? That's tip number one. Tip number two, uh, most students and even intermediate and possibly advanced players up until about the 19, 20, 21 year old mark near the um, end of the age limits for drum corps, uh, even still, they're intermediate or advanced, what they tend to work on audi audition pieces from beginning to end, from beginning to end, top to bottom, top to bottom. And uh, that's really not the best way to go about it. So think bite size pieces bite-sized pieces. Uh, you don't need to do this for whole notes and half notes and, and things that are going to be easy for you to do. <clears throat> Excuse me. You're going to section out the very highly difficult and um, technical parts of the audition. These could even include um, intervals and skips, fast finger stuff, um, of course upper register stuff, or anything extreme. So those are the um, parts that you want to section out. What you're going to do is section them into either small phrases or we can even break them down into one or two measures and work those individually before you sew them back into uh, the context of the entire audition piece. Um, also, that was tip number three, number, or sorry, tip number two, number three, metronome. <clears throat> it boggles my mind how many people I get from actually all the way up to adults really but uh, how many people that don't practice with a metronome why should you practice with a metronome because if you're preparing a piece and you come up with some difficult parts or there's a fast part in there with lots of fast finger stuff or even tonguing what you tend to do and you don't even know it you'll slow down the hard parts and you'll speed up the easy parts the metronome will make an honest um, player out of you so turn, if there's a metronome marking on your prepared for the audition, turn on your metronome and use that as a guideline. Of course, when you're preparing, um, you're going to be slowing it um, all the way down to half as much and maybe even less than that when you break in uh, the, the uh, piece apart into those bite-sized pieces that we talked about in tip number two. Tip number four, left-hand practice. What, what's that you said? I said left hand practice. Now this may not accommodate all the brass instruments in the horn line of drum corps. Um, <clears throat> trying to think of which one it might be might be the most. Well, I don't know. Um, it it could possibly be difficult to maneuver the heavy uh, contra for this particular technique. But if you can somehow work it, you want to try to play your prepared with your left hand. Why? When you play with your left hand, you activate different neurons in your brain a different in a different hemisphere. That's number one. Number two, it causes you not to be an automatic pilot. When you play with your left hand, you're going to have to think about what you're doing more so than if you play normally with your right hand. And number, uh, I guess number three on the left hand pra uh, practice tip. There's something about playing with your left hand that causes what you're working on, especially if you're practicing perfectly, to be more ingrained and entrenched in your brain. And this allows you to 
um, have a better execution of what you're doing when you go back to your right hand. So the left hand practice technique, the rule of thumb or the, or the, the format is two times slow. Actually, I should say two times very slow to one times fast. So for example, if you were playing a prepared that was quarter note equals 100, you would probably slow that all the way down to maybe even 46, 48, very, very slow. And you don't have to do this for the entire piece, although I recommend it, but you can certainly break apart the, the um, hard technical parts of your prepared into those bite-sized pieces we talked about in number two and work those individually with your left hand. Two times slow, repeat, and it's got to be perfect practice here. Pound those valves down hard, hard. Pound the correct notes, rhythms, and everything slow with your left hand. Then go back to your right hand after you've done it twice slow with your left hand. And I would recommend the right, the right hand, you go just a little bit faster for the first one and then go up to tempo if you can um, for the second time in your right hand. Okay, there's a lot more that goes on with the left hand practice, but I'm here, I'm just giving you the tip. Number five, physical exhaustion technique. <clears throat> you need to simulate an environment where possibly you, you're filled with anxiety, uh, performance anxiety, a little stage fright, a little butterfly, adrenaline dump, heavy breathing, um, sweating, weak in the knees, all those kinds of characteristics I could probably think of more, um, nervousness. You want to simulate that environment by doing the physical exhaustion technique. Physical exhaustion technique and again, I'm not going to give you a lesson on it, but basically you want to have your prepared on a stand. You want to already be warmed up well and good. And you want to proceed to make yourself winded and exhausted, maybe even a little queasy. So that would involve getting down and doing maybe 20 or 30 crunches, some push-ups, jumping up and doing jumping jacks, doing some squats, and uh, anything else that you can think of. You, I think you know where, you know, what my train of thought of this is. So the, the point is you don't catch your breath after this, after about two or three minutes of this, now you don't have to kill yourself. You just want to make yourself out of breath and a little bit exhausted. You pick up your horn and go right to town and play your prepared. This will simulate an environment when your heart is pumping, you can feel the, the, the veins in your neck bulging, you know, really hard. You're sweating a little bit, you feel out of breath, and um, maybe you, you feel a little weak in the knees, feel a, qu a, little, um, a little quiver happening there. Just don't feel so good. Sometimes all these um, characteristics can occur, believe it or not, in an audition, a very high pressured audition environment. So what you're doing is you're developing mental toughness and experience ahead of the game so that when you walk into the audition, should you encounter any of these feelings or sensations, you've actually encountered worse when you did the physical exhaustion technique and you can think back to when you did it and um, have the confidence to go ahead and just plow through your audition. So there's more to tell about that. That's just a tip for you. Next one would be the lip trill performance technique. Um, simply said, can you lip trill from beginning to end your entire prepared? Lip trill. And so that's a technique that actually involves probably a lesson, but uh, you know what a lip troll is, right? Can you lip troll everything from the beginning to the end in time? And if you can, it's likely you're going to do well on your prepared. Number seven, four square breathing for performance te technique. This is a breathing technique. Four square yoga It's designed to slow down your brain activity and your heart rate. So you can actually focus on the task at hand and it'll allow you to have a better uh, prepared performance. There's more that goes into that, but you can Google that or again, you can contact me for a lesson on that one. Dry lip, wet lip technique. If you play dry, like I do, have some chapstick or Vaseline on hand, lather up your lips and try to play your entire prepared opposite the way you are comfortable. So you'll be playing wet, wet and greasy. If you are a wet lip player, have a soft washcloth, of course it'll be dry, or paper towels, and really dry down your lips. Dry them down really good, dry that mouthpiece down really well, 
and maybe even swab a little bit of the inside of your lips and then play your prepared. Make sure to catch yourself that that tongue is not sticking in the mouthpiece right when you put it up. Of course, that defeats the purpose of drying everything off, right? Number nine, play your prepared scales, anything else, in front of somebody, preferably somebody that you don't know. Maybe even someone that doesn't like you, but definitely make it strangers. So you want to kind of get yourself almost embarrassed. I recommend go to a park. I recommend going downtown. Go downtown, find a park downtown, and get on a bench and do your prepared. Uh, where else could you do it? You might not, if you're at school, you might want, not want to do that there because that might catch up to you. But basically, you want to go somewhere and play this a few times, um, maybe once every three or four days, a week or two before your audition. Why? Because you will not believe what kind of confidence this will give you. You will also learn a little bit more about yourself. When you hear yourself playing the prepared and people are looking at you, of course, they're not an audience. They just might be walking by. Maybe they're in the park. Maybe you're downtown. You're at an intersection. Uh, you will develop mental toughness and confidence to do this. And, and the last tip for you, memorize. When you memorize anything, whether it's this audition that you're working on or whether it's calculus, chemistry, it doesn't matter. What are you really doing? You're over learning. You're over learning. And you definitely want to over learn your prepared. I would never recommend any of my students going into any audition unless they had the whole thing memorized. Memorize it. And then take that memorized prepared and scales and go out in the public at that park or downtown or anywhere else you can think of and play it from memory. Okay, those are um, some good free tips for you. If you take those to heart, I can guarantee you're going to do much better than you otherwise would have on your audition. Now, in the video description below, you'll find a link that you can click on. It'll take you right to a bonus technique that I give out at trumpetsizzle.com. And this will help you to squeeze out an extra whole step and range and up to 25% more endurance without even learning new material techniques. It's all about efficiency and protocol in your practice. So, uh, okay, then that's most of the freebies that I got for you. Should you happen to have a $5 bill and four ones, if you got nine bucks, I highly recommend that you get my new ebook. It's got 10 things in there. Likely you're doing more than one uh, that might be screwing you up or holding you back on your plane. Plus it includes the Bill Chase inspired bonus technique. If you got the $9, I highly recommend that. The last thing, top of the pyramid here would be, I'm also providing a low cost audition prep lesson via Skype or phone. Um, probably a combination of both, but definitely a Skype. And you can simply scan your prepareds save them as a PDF and email them to me. I'll print them out and we'll have a one hour up to a one hour lesson going over your audition and your prepareds and I'll listen to you play. Now, this is a low cost um, investment for you. If you are trying out for drum corps or a student, so it's $50 for this audition prep lesson. There's going to be many of you that are going to watch this that are not trying out for drum corps or not a student. Maybe you're 30 years, 30 years old and you want to go over something that you're maybe prepared for. This is not the rate for you. This is a student rate. So please don't um, call or email me about this um, $50 rate. This is only for students and only for these, this audition. Uh, if you're an adult, we have to work out something else. Okay. So... Again, go down to the description below the video. There's a couple things for you to click on. I'm Kurt Thompson. You can always email me at Kurt at TrumpetSizzle.com. That's K-U-R-T at TrumpetSizzle.com. And I wish you the best of luck and lots of fun in the upcoming drum corps season. All the best. Please go over to Patreon, become a supporter, Support my channel and my work and what I'm doing. I really need your help. Thank you so much. This is Kurt Thompson. Mm -hmm.